Before we start looking at the motion of the top, let's first define a few axes for it. We'll have the E3 axis coming out of the top of the stem, the E2 axis coming from the center of the top out of the arrow, and the E1 axis heading to the right perpen and perpendicular to E2 and E3 out of the top. We start a clockwise rotation around the tippy top's E3 axis. During this period of time, you can watch the procession of the top around the z-axis. We can also see some mutation of the E3 axis from the vertical, from the vertical Z axis. At this point in time, you can see that the rotation around the E3 axis has almost come to a stop as the top rotates around its E2 axis. As the stem hits the table, we have a new frictional force created at the point on the stem. Because the stem is moving, the stem of the top is moving faster, we have a greater, we have a greater frictional force on the stem, imparting a greater change in angular momentum than the point on the ball. Due to frictional forces causing the top to rise, you can now see that the top has a spin minus omega in the E3 direction. Because the center of mass has risen, our potential energy has increased, meaning our kinetic energy, the angular momentum L, has decreased. Say you initially have the top spinning counterclockwise around the E3 axis. So its angular momentum is straight up in the L, straight up in the Z direction, with uh, nearly all of angular momentum just dependent on L, L3. So we, we could then say that the angular momentum has, we'd have a velocity at this point going into the board because the frictional force is being opposite the direction of velocity we'd have the frictional forces pushing out of the board and because and so our torque r cross f would be down and out of the board pointing pointing down into the negative 
torque R cross F has a negative E3 component and a positive L1 and L2 component. So we can expect that L3 will decrease and L1 and L2 will increase over time.